Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 15 in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. So in our previous episodes, we've gone through, created a blog, created articles on that blog with a resource, and then created comments related to that article. Our previous episode, we started doing some refactoring, and we're going to continue doing some refactoring. Now, this episode will be focused on using concerns, and we'll you can go through the previous episodes of this series to get up to where we are now, but concerns, you want to typically have a focused set of functionality that can be refactored out and shared between different either models or controllers um, or other Ruby objects. If you had um, shared functionality that you, that could be modular and included in um, concerns uh, very often in, programming languages called mix-ins. So you would include that kind of mix-in to your functionality in order to um, be able to have that modularity and include it without copying and pasting it and having that code have to be maintained separately all the places that it's being used. So um, there are two typical places where you'll find a uh, a concern in a Rails app. So app controllers concerns and app models concerns. Uh, this uh, particular Rails guide goes in, into depth on model concerns. So we're gonna have, um, as you can see a little bit farther down on the screen, a status string attribute that we'll be adding to both the article and the comment models. And then we're going to kind of look at the, the repeated and duplicate functionality created on that and refactor it out. You can also have that sort of thing for controllers in a situation, let's say you've got a cart for a checkout sort of thing, and there are multiple controllers from which you want to include that, uh, that cart functionality, like setting your cart or something like that. You could include that like before action set cart instead of including that in every single controller. Um, you could have um, a, a a controller concern called current cart or something like that, and then for the relevant controllers, you could include current cart so that you're not having to write that set cart method and other related methods in each of those controllers that require it. So we'll get going here and. We'll generate our migrations for both the um, the articles and the comments, and then we'll run those migrations. So we'll start with add status to articles. We'll take a look at it. So this is by how we named the migration here. So you can see add status to articles, the way we named that, uh, the generator inferred from that name that we're changing, adding a column called articles, uh, called status to the articles table of type string. So we can, we'll do the same thing um, and, and that status string there uh, after the name of the um, of the migration also helps determine the, um, the data type there that we're using. So we'll do the same thing now with comments. Generate that migration. And we see that it's it's slightly after in terms of the migration order there so that in the event that we run these migrations or roll back these migrations that the um, th they'll be in that that order so the migration there change looks like what we should expect so we'll continue on and my run that That was successful. You can see 
in our schema. Now we've got this uh, string status in both of the models. Let's run our tests as is right now. And that in and of itself didn't um, break any of our tests because we don't have any validations associated with this attribute yet. They're all complete, they're just optional attributes, so it doesn't break anything looking backwards. So uh, the next thing that we're going to do is add the status to our strong parameters for uh, both our articles controller and our comments controller. Articles controller, we can permit status, comments controller, permit status, rerun our tests, Still nothing broken. And we'll continue on. And now, so we've got this valid statuses, and then we're validating status, status inclusion in valid statuses. So I'm gonna go in before I make this change for both article and comment, I'm going to um, to add um, some failing tests that will um, will we'll add the code in to make pass. So we'll take a look first at article test. And after this, we're gonna add I'll, I'll just write the test and then we'll take a look at it. So we'll take a look at what we've got so far. So um, should be invalid with a bad status. So um, new example, um, valid title, valid body, status is a bad status. Um, assert that the article is not valid and that the error message is, um, is there the same thing, changing the status to the bad status. Our bad status here we put in the setup block. Um, so bad status is censored, which is not in our list. And then the status inclusion message. So we'll try that. It should fail. And we have the one failure expected true to be nil or false. We'll add similar logic to our comment test, which is as of right now. Unused, so we'll um, we'll write a setup block here and um, add in our comments test, adapt it. So we've got our comment adaptation here. So we have an article that we're doing and then a comment I'm just picking from an, a comment from the different article but uh, we've got those there and then uh, comment or valid body and then we've got a um, a bad status I should add in a valid status for this as well so that we're testing both the happy and unhappy paths I'll pause and add that in all right so we have our happy path version of this so comment is a comment is a new comment we set commenter, valid body, article, valid status. We uh, assert that the comment's valid. We save it, reload it, uh, assert that it has an ID, that the article ID matches the, um, the article ID we had, and then um, that the uh, commenter body and status match what we expect there. The, um, the status, we, sh we should also have this valid status in our article item there and add it to our article test. So we've got valid status, 
we'll add that here. And then make assertions about it. Pause and do that. So we've got the valid status being asserted there. Um, we've got the status being provided. And then we're asserting that the fixture version that we've got is valid. We'll go back and rerun our tests. We should see two failures, I expect, here. Only one. I didn't say a comment test. We got three failures. So expected nil comment test. Let's take a look at that. It's because we didn't name our align our instance variables there. Try it again. So we've got two failures in both cases, expecting that they should be uh, invalid when they are in fact valid. So let's take a look at the validations we have here. So valid statuses and then validates status included inclusion in valid statuses and both of those are are the same there so we'll add this to article I'm going to change the article RB And we're going to make this um, match what we had in our controller here with the um, the formatting of that array. stick with our default of double quotes here in terms of styling. Let's see where that gets us for our tests. It might actually break some of the tests that we had. So let's take a look at article tech test. Um, 17 is failing now. article controller status. Oh, because we've got uh, nil values in this. So um, we're going to need to add a status to our fixtures. So let's go and stick at least now for the stick to our models for now and then we'll go in uh, make any changes we need for. Uh, so article test 17 is still uh, at line 20 failing there. Um, assert article dot valid because we didn't match case. Still failing.
think I need to make that. That, that was creating symbols with the... So let me fix that. Yeah, I just need to do it correctly. That should still work, and it does. That was our that was our problem for more than that test, I think. So we've got still getting an error with should update article. And create article. So we'll go in and add a status to our existing articles here. us back down to our two failures. We need to do the same thing on our comments. Still got our, we've got failure on comments test line 43 because we haven't added those, that same set of status functionality to the comment model yet. Now, we are still failing. Let's stick to models. The models were down to one failure, line 22. didn't change our valid status to match the case. So now our models are succeeding. And our comments controller and articles controller tests are now failing. So we need to, for those create actions at least, go in and make sure that we're specifying a status. So should create article preempt this with valid status, get that from our article test. Do 
the same thing for comment. syntax error because I didn't it's an articles controller test didn't put a comma so now we're back to passing with all of our tests And we want to now, we're adding the, um, we also need to add a test for our archived um, um, method to each of these. So we'll pause and do that. So we've got um, test about should be true if archived, false if not archived, run those, those are passing, we'll add that to our comment test as well. And just replace article with comment here. So we've got that, rerun our model tests they're still passing. So we'll continue on and add to our articles index. This unless statement. Articles index. And then in order to make this meaningful, we need to go to our articles controller test now and for index. We need to make this article count minus one, and we need an archived article in our fixtures. So I'll add that fixture. We've got this now um, archived and updated article here. We'll go back into our index.html.erb, get rid of the code we just added, run our tests, I might need to put that in. parentheses there. Oh, that's because it's treating it as a unary minus. There we go. So we, let's 
expecting two, found three. I'll re-implement. our logic in the index. We're back to passing now in advance in our show action here. Um, make these both minus one. as long as we put a space between the minus and the one. Rerun our tests. We will add in an archived comment on that article. So we've got an archived article, uh, archived comment on uh, the nerd article. Now, this will fail with two and three instead of one and two. So we'll add to the show .html.erb our condition. Actually, no, it's not in the condition anymore. It'd be in the comment partial is where we've got it. So. And honestly, this should be query, you should be doing this query in the controller rather than the view. But for the purposes of this stage, we'll save that refactoring for a later time. We're back to passing again. And now we can see this. Um, we can see that we've got a lot of log logic duplicated. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this into two videos. So the first one, this one here, setting things up for refactoring into the visible module. And then our next uh, video will actually go in and refactor everything into the visible module. And then, we'll, <coughs> excuse me, we'll also go in and uh, refactor some of our repeated test code into uh, test helper methods. So we will stop with where we are now, run all of our tests to make sure we didn't break anything in the browser-driven tests. We have not yet, so we'll take a look at our modifications. We've got a lot of them so far, and then our two new migrations. Take a look at our diff. So adding status parameter to the strong parameters. We've got the completely at this point duplicated code in comment and article. We add the unless to the index and the comment partial. We've got our new attributes in the schema. Uh, we changed our article controller to um, and, and fixtures to have an archived article so that we can show that it's being excluded. And then we went and modified our fixtures, our article test, and our comment test with the boilerplate commented test uncommented there. So we'll add all of that. write our commit message. So we've got our commit message noting that we're still in progress and we kind of set things up for our refactoring that we'll do in our next video. We will close our saved code, saved windows here, push to the remote, and then we'll use the concerns in our next video.
Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code, and taxation is theft.